In this short video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at what impact a single jump in the underlying price, here the underlying is a stock of a firm, has on the observed behavior of the volatility smile of the options trading on this stock. So what we'll assume here is that the stock which we are talking about as the underlying is currently trading let's say at a stock price of 50 and a single jump is expected over the let's, let, let's say upcoming short period let's say a couple of weeks or a month and this jump can be let's say because of some event related to this stock that can be a merger that can be a legal lawsuit it can be anything and because of that that event which we are referring to we can say that let's say the stock price can either jump from its current value of 50 let's say up by 15 dollars or down by 15 dollars that means it can land up with either 65 or 35 now to make things slightly let's say non-even let's not assume that this jump is a 50 50 kind of a jump i mean in terms of probabilities let's assume that the probability of an up jump is 70 percent and the probability of a down jump is let's say 30 percent let's assume that after this jump has materialized either ways i mean an up or a down jump the 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 stock price let's assume it then evolves under the standard assumptions of geometric Brownian motion, you know, which we assume in a Black-Scholes world with a volatility of 30% and with an expected return mu of 12%. Both these numbers, let's assume they are annualized numbers. So what does this kind of assumed, uh, let's say, evolution of the stock price? That means first a jump, an up jump or a down jump, followed by a geometric Brownian motion, what does this evolution have in store as far as let's say the final distribution of the stock price is concerned so i am referring to here the final distribution let's say achieved at a horizon of six months so i'm not here really pinning down a, a time frame for that jump to happen i'm just saying that it'll happen very soon and beyond that jump, there is a six month interval over which this stock price will evolve using the geometric Brownian motion assumption. And therefore, I can impose the log normal distribution on this stock price beyond the jump. Okay. So let's do this. Let's actually, you know, work our way through a simple kind of a experiment right and and that end of the experiment we'll try and see what distribution did we get for our final stock price so let's do this let's flip a coin and let's say this coin flipping denotes the jump that we are talking about if we arrive with the heads let's say the probability of that happening is 70 percent then it means an up jump and if we arrive with a tails let's say it's a down jump so this column b denotes the flip of the coin and in terms of the number that we've written here a plus one denotes an up jump and a minus one denotes a down jump okay now once this coin has been flipped then let's assume that i'll simulate the stock price going forward based on a different starting stock price had there been an up jump it means i'll start with a stock price of 65 and had there been a down jump, I'll start with the stock price of 35. And then we'll take a look at this price and plot its distribution. Let's do that. So this is my this is my jump. This is my simulated stock price. Let's write down the formula for this. It will be the S which I start with. As I told you, in an up jump, it will be 65. In a down jump, it will be 35. That times E to the power, let's write it, it will be mu minus sigma square by 2t plus sigma root t this times a st standard normal simulated variable z so this z changes in all these simulations 
The way we've simulated this z is very simple. It's basically the norm s inverse of a uniformly distributed random variable rand. Okay, so this is how I get a simulated stock price. Now, very simple. Beyond that, just find the the range of variation of this stock price. I mean, it's min and max. Based on this range, create a set of bins, and then in these bins. Find out what is the frequency distribution, how many stock prices, you know, finally simulated ones end up in each of these bins. Convert this frequency into a PDF by dividing the frequency by the total number of simulations. Here I have conducted 32,000 simulations as well as the bin width. Remember, the PDF is the height of that graph, right? Not the area. So therefore, I have to divide it by the width of the bin width bins also. And here the bin width is 2. Okay, see all these bins are spaced $2 apart. So this column H, therefore, it gives me the simulated PDF of the stock price if it follows this thought experiment of first a coin toss and then a GBM kind of a simulation. Now let's do this. Let's go with the idea which is suggested in the book and the book suggests that because of this kind of an evolution, that means a single jump followed by a GBM, it says that the stock eventually has a distribution which is like a mixture of two log normal distributions. So let's do this. Corresponding to each of these stock prices, 10, 12, 14 and all, let's write down the PDF which we arrive at using a log normal distribution. To make that log normal distribution work in Excel, what you have to provide to this function is the mean, I mean the expected value and the standard deviation of the log of this variable, the log of the final stock price. So what will that be? Go back to FRM part one simulation chapter or let's say the Black-Scholes chapter, the formula for the mean of the log of final stock price and its standard deviation would be the mean would be given by the log of the price at which you start with. As I told you, it's either 65 or 35 plus it will be mu minus sigma square by 2t. That's the, that's the mean of the variable Okay, for whose PDF I am seeking. The standard deviation will be sigma root t. Okay, so in these two distributions, what I'm doing here is I am just changing this part. Everything else is the same. Okay, in the two distributions, this part is different because in distribution one, let's say it's the left distribution. Left distribution, let's say, happens when stock price goes down and that starts off with an LN of 35. The distribution two, let's say it's the right distribution, that happens when there is an up jump, that means LNS is LN65, okay? These are my two log normal distributions. Let's mix them. Let's do a probability weighted mixture. That means it'll be distribution one times 30% plus distribution two times 70%. This gives me this mixture PDF, okay? Now, what do I have? I have two distributions in front of me. This is my Monte Carlo distribution and this is my mixture of log normals. Before we move ahead, let's try and plot them and see what kind of behavior do we observe. Take a look at this orange graph. This orange graph is for the mixture of two log normals. Take a look at this, you know, wavy or jagged blue graph. This blue graph is for the Monte Carlo simulation, okay? Now, if I keep recalculating my sheet, this blue graph keeps changing, but still note that we do find agreement between our simulated distribution, which is the blue graph, and the theoretical mixture of log normals, which is the orange one. So, so far, so good. Now, now let's do this. Let's try and now finally, now that we have a distribution in front of us, take a look at what impact this single jump will have on my volatility smile, okay, on of this of this of the set of options which trade on this underlying. So to do that and to make an, an apple to apple comparison, I would want to superimpose on this bimodal distribution, this, you know, it's a mixture of two log normals, it creates two modes, one is at this price, another one is at this price. So add this, you know, superimpose on this bimodal distribution, a log normal distribution, and as I said, to make it an apple to apple comparison, let's ensure that this log normal distribution, which I have now superimposed, 
has the same mean and standard deviation that means at least the first two moments as the bimodal distribution so to do that let's do this take a look at your your simulations column c convert your simulations to log of the simulated stock price so that is column m okay so this column it's the ln of st that means ln of the final stock price and try and do a mean and a standard deviation of this you know ln of st now when you do that you will be getting numbers for the mean and the standard deviation that we will now put into the excel's log normal distribution formula to get a log normal distribution that carries the same first two moments as my simulations or the mixture of log normals okay now when you plot this log normal distribution that's the dashed distribution now let's take a look at what impact it'll have on volatility smile now as you've you know touched upon in the volatility smiles chapter the area which we have to focus on are the tails take a look at this log normals tails the left tail and the right tail both these tails tell you that the log normal distribution i mean the one which has the same first two moments it has fatter tails as compared to the bimodal okay so if the log normal has fatter tails it would mean that this log normal distribution will price out of the money calls and out of the money puts relatively higher as compared to what the bimodal distribution would be would do okay and therefore if the bimodal distribution which is the true distribution that takes into account the the jump in the stock price prices these options lower as compared to log normal what you would observe for the volatility smile behavior is not really a smile but rather a frown something like this why because the out of the money options have been pushed down because these options when you price them using the observed or implied distribution the log normal price has to be or the log normal wall that goes into the black scholes formula has to be pushed down to match that price okay and therefore you see a frown the way we've tackled this frown in the the video which covers it for the curriculum is by using or invoking a binomial distribution formula what we assumed is that there is a set of options which expire at the same time at which this jump has materialized so the final distribution of the stock price is basically a, a sort of a discrete distribution not a continuous distribution like we see here and that discrete distribution if you were to compute its let's say kurtosis which measures the fatness of the tails then the distribution shows that the kurtosis is actually less than the log normal distribution kurtosis right so what we have done here is not used the binomial pricing model as such but what we have done is that we have used monte carlo rather to plot the distribution of the stock price and from the distribution we actually we have found that the tails of this distribution are slimmer compared to an equivalent log normal distribution okay so this was a quick look at how a single jump impacts the volatility smile behavior of equity options